sign your name on it. Thank you, no, and Mr. Fogg, you know, Matt Fogg's address. It's for something on tape. I'll show you again later. Mm -hmm. Can you remind me of the Wi Fi? Uh, there should be an open uh, guest room. Oh, Mr. Morrow. That's what it was. Mr. Morrow made post school of music. Thank you for the presentation. Oh, my gosh. That's He's pretty the old. kid's music teacher. We're, we're oh, really? <laughs> Sorry. We're just discussing. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> It was all good. <laughs> that should be an open Wi Fi, I guess. I can't, I like, not even get in there. Okay. Um, all right. So let's call the meeting to order. Um, we, the minutes were sent out um, twice. Patricia, are you able to, you're our new secretary, are you able to take minutes? Yeah. Um, and also, those, we would, um, I don't know about you guys, but I like my brain is in do, building so many things. Can we do the minutes and the agenda? Closer to the next meeting, Emily was like super on they, top of things. They do. They go out twice. They go out right after the meeting, and okay, then when we send out, out the reminder, they okay. go out again, so that everybody initially has them. Perfect. And then when the reminder goes out, they go out Perfect. again. Because yep. well, because I was thinking we could also do that with the agenda, so that if we want to modify it, mm -hmm. like we can do a draft from here, this meeting, and then if we want to modify it, we can send it out. It's a lot happens between, so we can do that. That would be great. So Thank I think you. when they when they first went out, Cody gets a copy of it so they can go on the website. So she has copies of all of that. Yep. And then if we need to make changes, we can send her an updated one. Perfect. I think that would be good. And we can just kind of connect. We can just do that. Does that sound reasonable to everybody? Yes. Mm -hmm. good. Okay. Um, minutes. Hey, let me just check on. Sorry. And make sure there's nobody post me. I was checking on. There you go. Move to approve minutes. Thanks. All right. Anybody want to second that? Second. Thank you, Ellen. All in favor? Oh, sorry. Discussion. Sorry. <laughs> any corrections? I'm sorry. My brain is. Rob was really too much. Anybody have any questions or comments about the meet the minutes? Seeing none. Thank you, Ellen. Everybody in favor? Um, Okay, we did a minute. Citizens comment. Are there any, is there anybody online that wishes to comment? I don't see anyone here. Is there anyone online? Okay, um, let's move into our, the beach environment. And tonight we were focusing on the dog ordinance. We all had homework from last. Mm -hmm. And I week. gave everybody a copy of the animal control. Thank you. Um, I don't know if anyone, I guess we'll open it up. I had put comments at the very bottom and at Google after I'd gone through it. Nothing hugely, I didn't see anything, but, and Emily did as well. Thank you. Um, anybody else want to comment on our comments or add additional comments? Personally, I think the whole thing is confusing. It needs to be described and rewritten, but that's not going to happen. So we can I, move on from there. Yeah, I tend to agree. I mean, it, with which part? With which part? That was a like that that needs to be scrapped, or that it's not going to happen. Oh. <laughs> it's, I, the whole thing is so confusing. Yeah, I I found you know a few violations and whatnot, but it wasn't clear who's enforcing what kind of ramifications to me. Um, yeah. It, they, they do tell you who's enforcing, and that's the dog catcher or whatever you want. Animal you mean, well, that looked like on severe cases, not not if an animal came up to you. No. Yeah, it's... And they, that's where we're weak. Right. Yeah. So I think there's a couple things when I read through it, and just for framework for you guys to be thinking about is. This is a massive document. There's certain cool. things in the document that they have to have, like some of the police statues that are linked to something else where mm -hmm. it's just, it's language, you know? And so, um, so I think if there's, to kind of help this process, if there's words that we don't like, or, you know, there's clarifications that we need needed because you don't understand it. Um, I think those are the things that if you identify those, then the next step would be making suggestions to change them. And then the third piece would be, how do you, or can we even change that suggestion? You know, because some things are there, but like, the, I'm making this up, the length of a leash, you know, yeah. if that's a concern for somebody, then those are recommendations we can make mm -hmm. if you wanted to, or 
fines or um, where people can be at what time. Some of the, the things that make this long and sometimes a legal document is really what it is, are, are things you're not going to be able to change per se, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that, you know, depending on once you get through this part, the fourth part of this would be um, how do you make a document that you can share that's viewer friendly? And that's what Jill's working on with a lot of our beat signs right now. Yep. Icons and links and, and QR codes where it's just the key messages. So um, in general, it looks like Emily and I, to sort of to your point, I, in, I have three areas of concern. One, I and I guess to our point, is an ordinance where we would identify who enforces it or is that separate? Um, no, an, an ordinance would say who is responsible. For okay, it. so that's probably one point that we need to identify other than the animal control person. Um, I thought in general, the fees are too low to be a deterrent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I thought that um, I was, I did think the leash, I thought it should be a little longer. Um, leash length? Yeah, leash length. I, I, is 12 foot length appropriate, I guess is what I said. How was it determined? Like, how did we determine the length of the leash? The leash? That Wait, leash. Can, I, can you clarify that? So would it to have dogs not be up on other people, wouldn't we want the leash to be shorter? Yes. No. Is that the longest you can do? It says, yeah, 12 is the longest. Well, it's a 12 is appropriate. 30 is the longest. Oh, so it would be shorter then to right. keep it in closer. So yes, yeah, I guess sure. that's because my the question. Leash can well, be 30, yeah. but the if a dog approaches within 10 feet of any person other than the responsible party, that dog is not under voice control. Right. So, so I, that bubble feels big. Is that what you're saying? Yes. So I guess yes. my question is 12 foot length appropriate. Like, do we want it shorter? So it would be the leash length. So length. I think a typical shorter leash is six feet. I think there's eight, some that are eight. Eight, eight. eight. eight feet is the one we use in Portland as their standard. It's 25 and eight in Portland. So I'm, I'm wondering where the 30 and 12 you know, came from. Well, this is that's 10 feet. Not Sorry. We set the standard, but I'm just happy. <laughs> yeah. we, that's Portland is the end all. Okay. <laughs> 12 feet. So if you're saying within 10 feet, I don't care. Yeah. I, I think that, uh, and again, I think we can make any recommendation you want. Uh, you know, I will say that. Um, when just reading this again, handheld device, 30 feet or less, we use to restrain the dog, kill the response, voice, blah, 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 animal control. And then it says below. So that's, I think, in the off season. And then during April to Labor Day, a leash of length no longer than 12 feet shall be allowed at any time on the beaches. Again, these are the things. How do you enforce it? Like if, again, with my young dogs, I got a 30 foot training leash. The rest of my leashes are eight feet with a handle in the yeah. middle. And it turns into a three-foot leash. That's just what I have with my. So dog. maybe yeah. we need to clarify that the leash needs to allow the owner to keep the dog within ten feet of another person, and quickly, because some yeah. Yeah, I, I think it's just consistency, right? I don't care if you yeah. don't want to specify what. How did you land at eight feet? I don't know. <laughs> but no one's complained about it. No, because I think, yeah, I mean, it's just a standard shorter leash. Yeah, length. most leash yeah. when you buy are like six, eight, 12, and you know, yeah, that kind of go through. Yeah. It, here's the thing I will caution you guys on though. Um, when we put changes to, like, and I'm not, not to pick on you quickly, you know what I mean? Uh, within reason, those are all interpretive. Like, yeah. my new park rangers are not going to be like, hey, you know, I didn't do it quick enough. So I think those type of things, when we're thinking about, a change we make or improvements we want to make, how would then you enforce it? Like to make it consistent, because I think that's our biggest problem is being able to enforce what we have. And so mm -hmm. let's try not to do anything that makes it harder. Yeah. So, um, but I think to Emily's point, I'm sorry, Ellen's point as far as that you've got a rule of 10 feet, yet you've got a 12 foot leash. So yeah. would you think the leash should be less than the 10 feet circle? Right. So right. I know when the dog's at the end, I'm not within your circle. Like, those I think are measurables that I could train our rangers or work mm -hmm. with the reserves to understand. Like, hey, it's a ten, you know, if you got an eight foot leash or less and it's a ten foot circle, your dog's not touching a person. You're not in violation. Yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. those are easy metrics to be able to train somebody on versus, you know, uh, or somebody that's a new dog owner. Does anyone have a problem with proposing eight feet? Nope. For the leash. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think people are either going to be 
on on a leash and not pay attention to the leash length or they it's going to be off the leash and it's going to be the dog is going to be doing whatever they need. but it does for consistency if we're saying within 10 oh, feet right. yes it yes, just correct. kind of makes sense that yes. it should be under 10 feet let's do a version of I still don't understand the first part, handheld device. Yeah, they should. Uh, is a leash a handheld device? Is that a definition? Well, are they talking about those clicky leashes that you push the button, the thing you're trying to mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah, you say <laughs> handheld device. Is it a clicky? And again, who's measuring it? So the, the one of the comments that I had was the definition of leash uses the word leash in it. So the actual definition is not defined and should be better defined because it could be any and all of those things. Like can someone take a lead that they use in their yard and clip it to their dog and go walking with their dog that way? I think if it's under whatever length, they could. So maybe the definition of leash, because it's under leash, is a handheld device. Maybe that is the definition. That's what I was wondering. Yeah. It's and under any, leash. any handheld device flips to your... 30 feet handheld. or less in length. That's what a leash... I would interpret that as being their definition of a leash. Except April does Labor Day. But are we changing the 30 feet up top top and the lower down? Well, I'm assuming 30 feet. I don't have a dog, but like if you have one of those click things, it can go up to 30 feet, right? Yeah. I don't think we want to limit that because that may be the only leash people have. Mm -hmm. But then... So outside of the April 1st to Labor Day period, you could have your dog 30 feet away from you on a leash. Yes, technically, if it went to the full length of the leash. Okay. And we're, okay. So it's where we're being more restrictive is during, is April 1st to Labor Day. Eight times. Yeah. Uh, another word that I may consider, you, you know, for your consideration a leash of length no longer than 12 feet or no, eight feet, if that's what you're saying, shall be used at all times. Um, could you, what am I trying to get at? Um, leash length, I don't know. Because again, if, if you only have the retractable, you know what I mean? I have to keep it within eight feet, you know what I mean? Versus mm -hmm. I'm going to go get a separate leash for Maple to, you know what I mean? So I was just trying to know how to make the wording jive to say, uh, Even if you have a retractable leash, you can't yeah, go any yeah, longer than eight yeah, feet. Yeah, your your dog can be yeah, no yeah. further away from you than eight feet. When your dog leash. is on leash, yeah. it can be no further than eight feet away from you during this period. Right, like, that way it lets you. Yeah, again, go for it. You like know. That. So then, how are people like? For me, I don't necessarily know what eight feet is yeah. either. Too. So yeah. when my leash is out, well, I don't know. It could be two, or it could be. I, I think 12. the issue comes when there's an issue. Right, you know, and, and, and that's what, I'm the enforcement is not going to say, "Ooh, that's no one's no, no, yeah. no, But I think if people have, if we keep reinforcing the ten feet, mm -hmm. and eight feet is closer to ten, I mean, it's not mathematically closer to ten, but if it's under ten, that will, will, will stick in people's heads. Mm -hmm. I think it's approximate, right? We're trying to get people to comply. Well, the mm -hmm. point is, keep your dog saying that consistency <laughs> and whatnot. Ten feet is the rule. Do we say 10 feet or under? Oh. Just to make so it's an eight one number. Oh, yeah? Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah, simple. yeah, that's good. Simplify so it. You got to remember now that you're talking about 10 feet being away from a person. The dog owner has to be the length of the leash beyond that oh. circle. So it's not like the 10 feet. You can't, you can't let the dog run up to a kid or a sure. person. You have to be 10 feet away. So... Oh, you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So really, it's twenty, 20 feet. feet. If, if the dog gets in the leash, they're truly twenty feet. What's the feet center old. of the circle? Is it the dog? The center of the per, per circle is the person mm -hmm. that the dog cannot no. approach without permission. The non-owner, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah. 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 Oh, the the non-owner is the center of the circle, and then so it's a ten foot front. upper. Yeah. You get a 10-foot circle around yes. that. Okay. Now, however long the leash is, doesn't really matter. The issue is this 10 feet, the dog can't win. It doesn't matter where the owner is. Yeah. Well, then you technically know, the leash doesn't matter. matter. Well, but there are, Portland has eight, Cape has eight all year round. 
mm -hmm. forget mm -hmm. <laughs> just the summer. It's all year round. Mm -hmm. And I think if you specify a shorter leash, mm -hmm. then there's more control. There's a, just yeah. a little bit, yeah. it, just, just more control. Like I'm, if I'm a dog owner, I'm thinking, okay, it's got to be within 10. I'm thinking 10 feet. You're right, Rick. Like that's technically correct. But if we're training people to think 10 feet, I'm going to keep my dog within 10 feet of me and I'm going to say that's what I take that as I didn't realize that we were talking no, about the other right. person. Yeah, 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 you're right. But I still yeah. think it's all training to your point. I agree. Keep it simple. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So to, then do we change that to all year round in a, in an that's attempt a to keep it simple? Issue. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'd like that personally, but I, that's a separate issue. I think that would probably, that's a that major makes change. change. Yeah. That makes, that's a major change. Yeah, Cause I think, I think people enjoy, I'm not going down that road. I think people enjoy yeah, it. And I think that, you know, as a dog owner, yep. if I've got a young dog, you know, and he, she is not, or he's not under voice control yet, you you need that distance to be able to train them properly. If they're always within arm's length, yep. it's that recall is yep. not, it's, you know, you keep growing the distance away. And then, so I think there needs to be an opportunity for a long leash if they, you know, so. But not able to Labor Day because there are safety issues. Well, that's what I mean. No, I think so. That, yeah, yeah, I yeah. hear you. Let's yeah. Leave it the way. Right. Yeah. Just leave it for that time. But the ten feet from any person is all year long. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. that's. A, I feel like that's more important than the leash. I agree. Yeah. That yeah. also is not just the beach. That's the entire. That's what yeah. I'm trying yeah. to get. Yeah. So we're talking about the entire yeah. Down Scarborough. Yeah. 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 So I didn't want to bring it up to get too, too muddy in the water, but I went through yesterday um, and printed all the ordinances that theoretically this department has their fingers in. And so once you, I was, once you guys get kind of your framework, I will then go back and look at for your recommendation affects everything else. Cause we've got a park ordinance. We've got a, a smoking ordinance that doesn't match up. We've got river wildlife sanctuary, which is one of our parks that has a different set of rules. And then we got to go with the coastal waters ordinance. And so there's, there's stuff. Mm -hmm. And some haven't been revised since 2004, 2005. So, so how do changes get made to these? So what you will do is you guys will make a formal recommendation. It'll provide, this is how I think it should go. We present it to Karen because she's our liaison. Mm -hmm. And then she would make the recommendation to the council for the ordinance committee mm -hmm. to, re to review it. We send it to the formal ordinance committee. And they run it through their process, which is usually review, public comment, and then back to council for final recommendation. It can be up to four months before yeah. you make a change to an ordinance yeah. for the public for the complete public process. So but that's why, again, um, once you figure out some of these, I'll do some digging and maybe get some help to see where some of these affect somewhere else. Because when we do it, like I got a beach ordinance here that doesn't even list. Where is it? Higgins Beach on chapter 1006 because it wasn't updated since 1995. So, um, so Higgins Beach doesn't exist, Roger, so stop calling me. <laughs> <laughs> I agree with you guys about the 10 feet, but I do think specifying the leash length as shorter in the summer might just tend to get people to comply more. You're still going to enforce the 10 feet. And I agree with Todd, like having the extra 30 feet if you've got a puppy, but you're still keeping them within 30 feet of you and 10 feet away from someone else. They still love the run. Yeah, they still got to do the whole per I, I, personal yeah. space thing. I agree that the 10 feet is more important. Just getting people to think about, oh, God, you have to bring a short leash because I got to keep control of that dog might lend to more clients. Uh, my new dog, or new, she's five months and old, me. She's older, but when we're downtown, she's on a three foot. Because she's so strong, I can't get her back from, mm. from eight, nine feet if you were to step out of a store. Yeah. Same thing as on the beach. Yeah. And then I don't immediately see anything about off leash before nine. I just see then page four. From May 15th to Labor Day. What so four, you know, six oh four ten. Page four, six oh four ten. Number, or excuse me, letter B. No dogs on any beach from nine to five. Dogs on leash from five to dusk. What about before 9 a.m.? I mean, I know what 
control. But where it does that say that? Well, should say five mm -hmm. p.m. to nine a.m. But that well, it says later. No dogs on any beach from thirty minutes after sunset to thirty minutes before sunrise. Yeah. Right. So really, it's sunrise to sunset nine. No, so in the morning sunrise it's sunrise like six a.m. You're saying if sunrise is at like six. What yeah. About, what's the rule? Well, so from six to nine, nine, we should specify. Yeah. If they're allowed. Or do we say why? from dawn until five p.m.? No, or is that the question? Why are yeah? Why are we trying to? I find it very challenging to uphold rules based on the sunrise. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Who yeah. determines what that time actually is? I like that feedback. Like, changes every day. It, well, yeah. it's, can it just be an hour? Can it just be hours? Like, uh, can we just say? And does it matter? If somebody's there. And technically, you can do activities on the water half an hour after sunset, and you know, right. like if you're on a right. lake or whatever. So, can it just be like a set time in the morning? Yeah, with the park or the beaches are open, and then a set time at night that yeah. the park, the park or beaches are closed. Yeah, that's a good question. I think what I was trying to say is where, why are the beaches currently set up so that they're they have this off leash time before nine a.m. Where is that in this? I don't see it. Well, so this is saying this is telling you when they can't be. So it's assumed the other times you yeah, can. Got it. Yeah. Okay. So it says restrictions yeah. apply. Gotcha. And so they're saying you can't be from nine to five, mm -hmm. which means then you can be from five to eight fifty nine on leash. Dog on leash from five p.m. to dusk in the sun. Yeah. So to Ellen's point, they there's no restriction whatsoever until nine a.m. in the from morning. Just in I think they need to specify. That. I well, think that no, there's no, so okay. inconsistency well, between the time of year, the days, and the times, and like if you ask me at any given time a year, like what the basic law is for a dog in any location, I could not tell you because okay. it's different now than it is after Labor Day, than it is in the summer, than it is in the winter. And I think the big problem would be keeping everything consistent with like the same days, the same time, the same time of year across the board for the whole year so that it's consistent. So like if dogs are allowed on leash, they're allowed on leash from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. the entire year. You're going to have dog owners that are going to push back on that because of the winter. So they, all they people around. on the beach. And and, but there's no people on the beach because there's so many dogs on the beach. So <laughs> so we're... I, I, I think we got to go with the beginning of it, which is May 15th. It should be uh, sunrise to 9. You can have a dog on because yeah, that's when they're there anyway. Right our now. other issue where we're saying our laws are so, are the least restrictive in the area. Mm -hmm. And so people are coming from other places this to good our this is a good beaches. Would it make sense once we hash out exactly the details, just in terms of being able to have people not need to create their own flow chart to figure it out? And this is good. <laughs> what I was going to say about creating a chart. Yeah. That, this is good. Yeah. Yeah, so what I well, that's why I wanted to get that to have okay. to cut you off, man. But I think you're exactly right. And so the thing we have to remember is nobody coming to visit Scarborough is going to look for chapter 604. Right. This is what goes to court. Right. This is when I have to say, Emily, I told you a million times, and this is what I'm finding <laughs> you. Right. So for us, it's does this do what we want to do? Signage and outreach and education simplified like these signs. These are the signs Jill made two summers ago. And right now she's in the middle of reworking surfing signs. Uh, she's doing new dog signs with mm -hmm. etiquette on it, you know, because with with icon. So that way, when you come in, it's like, I'm just looking at that. Yep. There's a big old cute dog. Yeah. Well, I'm going to go over and look at it. Or there's a surfboard. Mm -hmm. I'm going to pull me towards it yeah. versus yeah. our signs now are dot, 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 dot. Yeah. Uh, then it starts with a uh, asterisk. R79555 and then right. like, I'm oh, see you later. I'm walking right <laughs> right by that. So just again to keep this moving, how do you fix this the way you want it to be without the worried about the messaging and then deal with the the, the signs need to take the information that's in there and give it in yes, give yeah. 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 yeah, right. Yeah. So in terms of proposals at this point, where do we stand? We we talked about a short shortened leash. So this you just handed out. Yeah. It's coming around. But why don't we just take this blue thing yeah. that applies to this season? There's only like three different things. Yeah. 
It's very simple and make it up into yeah. the size of a yeah. postcard mm -hmm. and have the ranger have a pocket full of those. Yeah. And mm -hmm. he sees what she sees a violation. And just that, very, that, and very yeah. friendly, respectful like, manner. Well, when you get beach sticker, owner, yeah. well, that's just residents, but we're handing out the beach sticker right now. They're getting yeah. a, a little too. But there's a lot but, of information on there. Yeah. I got one and yeah. I was. But this says so. So when I see this, I think, oh, it's just a free for all for dogs before 9 a.m. Yeah. So, yeah. Yes, so it, what, is. it is. It is but but, it, it, but so this have to be under control. Well, that's the thing. They have to. What's, 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 what's voice control? Breath control. So, so we've got to, that's a non-restricted area. Controversial, mm -hmm. and there there has been great argument about whether voice control exists or not. I, I have my own feeling about that, but other people strongly disagree. And so, if if we want to discuss that, let, let's go for it. But. I think that's going to create a lot of conflict in the town. And before we get to that point, our biggest, most urgent issue here is a lot of people come down the beach, unhook the dog and let them go because they think it's okay. Yeah, right. And so we need to intervene in that. We don't need to ticket anybody. Don't need to find them unless, you know, they absolutely refuse. What's worse than that is people parking on the front Opening the door, the dogs go yeah. onto the beach, and there's so somebody of... made that comment. So I think that those are. So I was going to share it later, but it's probably a good time that we've hired, and we've started training with our lead ranger for a three forty hour week ranger. So we're going to have, because we didn't do it last year, we're combining both both budgets um, to get this pilot program working. We've created two posts, and we're working with PD, so they'll check in with the comm center. We've got the Higgins Beach post, which, can, which is everything on that side of town. Higgins Beach will be the base because that's where the, the beach hut is. Uh, ferry, um, uh, clay pits, um, Black Point Park, and Willie will be that side of town. And the other side of town will be Pine Point Post, Pine Point Co-op, Snowberry, River Sanctuary, Peterson. And so we will have two people on every day of the week. For eight hours mm -hmm. and one day a week we'll have three people on and our plan right now is to do that on thursdays that way we can do some messaging you get the concerts we'll have most people will work that morning shift so they'll be on the beach during the off leash hours and be there to educate when they're supposed to be on leash or out of an area they'll be on the beach for this summer uh and we're talking about a lot of surf beaches uses an air horn mm -hmm. giving surface a 10 minute warning before they come out of the watch because i'm not looking at my watch when i'm out Mm -hmm. So a lot of surf beaches will hit the horn, lets a surfer know this is the you got a 10 minute whistle. Um, and then we're with Steve Kramer, who's supervising, right, they're working on. OK, then for the other four hours a day, they'll move around based on other things. When low tide is hitting the co-op, getting in the parking lot, uh, that sort of stuff. So they're really going to enforce. I say enforce, take it back. They're really going to focus on outreach and education because the only thing they can do is write a parking ticket when they're trained. That's the only citizen action made because they're not deputized. So mm -hmm. um, a lot of the things that we're talking about solving to Roger's point has always been there's not enough enforcement. So we're going to put these people. We've got um, Tony, who's going to be our lead. He's a 30-year uh, retired um, uh, public works director from Connecticut. Um, we've got Nick, who's a Scarborough resident, uh, Eagle Scout. Uh, two year, he's working, I think, his Marine resource degree. Uh, he's been a uh, manager at the um, movie theater. And um, and then we've got Summer, who is from Lebanon, who, again, don't quote me, but I think she's just graduated. Well, I know she just graduated from UNO, and I think it's an agriculture and data research degree. She was cool. managing their dairy herd. So, like, three different types of people that, you know, um, and so they're all passionate a little bit about something different. Um, so we've got this week and next week with Tony, and then... For training, and then we bring on Summer and Nick the week before Memorial Day weekend. So I think that's going to be a huge step to those what I call pinch points. You know, mm -hmm. when it's off the leash. And I think again, when I read that, it, it was like this is not this should be when you get out of your car. Yeah, like these things that those are things we need to educate on. Like to yeah. your point, you just don't click it, open the door, and I don't let Dory out the door. It's like I got to get her from the car to the truck to, to wherever she's going to go. Because those are 
certain things. Yeah. The biggest um, issue for me at the beach as is this voice or is having a dog approach us and get in our space. And then the owner says the dog is friendly. So don't worry about it. Mm -hmm. When I look at this sign, I mean, other people can speak up and say that that's not their problem about dogs on the beach, but this sign doesn't help me with that. If we put this on a postcard and hand it out, yeah. there's nothing that says like, you know, make sure your dog isn't approaching. It doesn't say voice control. It does. But what does that mean? I mean, what is voice control? She's, to, she's to, talking about the 10 foot circle. Yeah. Around oh. non-owners. Yeah. 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 Kids. Oh, yeah. I think what you're saying is add that to the yeah, I think so. yeah. yes. No, I think it's a great idea. Like we yeah. could take the I back of that, yes, and we could come up with four or five bullet. Points. I don't think it should be on the back. I think it should be under voice control, aka not within ten feet of a non-owner without permission. Under voice control. So I get it. Yes. yes. Because whether they're under voice control or not, they still can't go into the ten foot circle without so what's the control. definition of voice control on the thing? But to Alex's point also, this only addresses beaches. What happens if I'm in Memorial Park with my family and the same thing happens? That doesn't address this. Well, that, that, that should cover wherever yeah. we have people, the whole town. Yeah. 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 So but but this know. also says restricted and non-restricted areas. How do I know what those are? So um, when you go to Higgins, there's a row of signs. You can't cross. Posted. There are oh, okay. signs. Same thing at... Um, uh, Ferry Beach, there's signs when you before you get to the corner ferry, before you go to Western, there's signs to say restricted area. And then there's signs at going left to Pine Point. Um, Some of the owners we, are starting to put stakes yeah. in too. And do we say posted restricted area? So what so what about the park? Is that a restricted or a non-restricted no, area? The restricted areas right now are designated because of the clovers. So the clovers, right. Yes. So that's why again. I think that what you're the work you're talking about doing, I think we can translate to the other pieces of yeah. it. You know, and then for us to make those recommendations, because right now, the way I understand it, there's really not a leash law in Scarborough. There is a voice control time frame. You know what I mean? And so we don't even have like in our rules, you can't be on athletic fields. It's a school rule. You know, we're always shooting people off. Hey, you want to go to Memorial Park, but stay off the field. And so there's a lot of education around what can or can't. And that's where I think the Ranger, once we establish what you guys want to prioritize, then we can translate that back. But athletic fields, playgrounds, you see dogs on playgrounds all the time. So can yeah. that, should we be adding that to this ordinance? I, well, Different I, locations? It absolutely is. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, then ball, that. Schoolyards, playgrounds, ball fields, sports. So that, yeah. love it. Yeah. So you know that off the top of so your head. <laughs> Could you do it again? Patricia, did you get it? So on, right under the definitions, it says beach. We should add a bullet that says playing fields, all the other. Mm -hmm. yeah. Can you give it to us again? And yeah, again. would we know really? <laughs> except the only difference is the time may be different. Like you may have an oh, evening yes. athletic event that's going to fall, have a different time. than. Well, the, we don't allow them on athletic fields all the time. That but that doesn't say that. No, I know, but I think that's why we got to dive a little deeper into it. You can just put the words under there, but then to your point, we're going to yeah. have to go through and say athletic fields anytime. Okay, so I'm hearing that we want to add all these other spots to this ordinance, all these yeah. other locations. Yeah, and then the thing we'll have to do, again, this is why this takes a multi-step process. We will then have to go through and create it. I mean, this is in the back of the ordinance. Why of restrictions? We will then need to gather what we're proposing yeah. and add it to our draft before it goes to say, again, I can get you all the facilities list. And we would create a list. Dogs not allowed on. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, or at this location, you know, here at this part of it. Like, you know, can you, I'm making this up, but can you be at the school? But not on the playground. You know what I mean? So we gotta define each area. Can I make a so just an organizational yeah, yeah. suggestion? So unfortunately, I deal with statutes. Yes. Uh, all day long. Yeah. Um, so and part of this may have been said before I walked in, and I apologize, but like in the leash definition, we shouldn't be talking about the restrictions in the definition section. Uh, yes, you're right. Okay. Yeah. You know, it's what is a leash? It is X. And yeah. then somewhere else is where we put in those restrictions. And then when we move out of the definition section and into some of these other parts, yeah. not like you said, everyone other than someone like me uh, would actually pull out the ordinance if yeah. they wanted to be in, uh, be in compliance, but just in terms of kind of 
if someone did find things a little bit easier or something that maybe is handed to people that get their dog licenses, things are kind of mixed together. Like here are the things that we don't want you doing wrong. Here's the way we deal with it. Here's how we organize it. So I, it might be too much work that the town wouldn't like to reorganize this ordinance, but I think that it could be organized in a way that just flows a little better for the understanding. Mm -hmm. I think that was your comment, Emily. It, it, the whole thing should be scrapped and turned over, but yes, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> but I think we're also throwing around a lot of ideas, and I don't, I want to make sure that we could like provide a bullet point with the bubble that we're talking about because we talked about like leash length, we talked about voice control. There's also points in there of sight control versus voice control too, which is a yeah, separate thing, but the two. same. So I think if we're talking about leash, like what are the bullet points of the leash that we want to make for the recommendation? So Trish, you had said Ten feet. that all leash owner, all dog owners must have a leash no longer than 10, 10 feet. feet during use at all times on the beaches and all the other, oh, that, I guess it would be separate because it's different times for the other locations. Beaches from April 1st to Labor Day. Only mm -hmm. beaches? Well, because our dates, we may have different, your, the it's school like athletic normal. fields are going to be used during the school year. So you want to have restrictions. So okay. if I go back, again, I'm going back to the park. Like if I go to the park, that's a non-restricted area, not a beach. So I still have to have an on- Everywhere. Yeah. I'm gonna throw that out. So, yeah. yeah. so it's not just being just say public no, no. property. Yeah. Wait, it's not longer than 10 feet. All right. It might be a little too restricted. You got eight in Portland. No. <laughs> in certain in certain areas, it's eight feet. So like if you want to have a leak, say at a beach or a high traffic area, you want to keep it at a shorter distance. But mm -hmm. if you have like more of an open space where you want dogs to run around, you want to allow for that 25 foot yeah, training leads, do the training yeah. and to allow them to run around a little mm -hmm. bit more. That's the point of bringing your dog. To okay, so we just I want it during the summer months. I disagree because the people that don't follow those rules ruin it for everybody. And if you change it up, then it, no one's going to comply because it'll never pass in this town. Yeah, why well, can't we yeah. just? Well, it'll never be it's not going to have to allow so 12 feet on the beaches during the summer months when the beaches are more densely 12? populated yeah. 10 i'm sorry 10 yeah. oh my god i just go away but, yeah. but isn't it 10 feet away from the non-dog owner yeah, rather than the yeah, yeah, it's the yeah it's we're going to do both it's both so right now we're only talking about the leash not the bubble the bubble i like that. okay so 10 feet on all the beaches uh, oh, beaches only for now yeah. for now april through labor day on the sheet that was being passed around there were the april first through labor day rules and the one through labor yeah. day rules mm -hmm. I, oh yeah there had to be consistency i just thought is there a reason that there's like the yeah, april one to make yeah that's what they when they went through the whole thing roger tell them and they went through when and where. Yeah. It was when the beaches were busy, which included plovers and turns and nesting. April. Okay. And then that's so that's what started as the April first date, um, which is now in the beach management agreement, yeah. which is in a lot of those things. Yeah, so there'd be more to come back and through. Yeah. Um, and then the other season turns again theoretically the open, mm -hmm. less pressured season. So what is the outside April first to it could be up to thirty feet. Yeah. Up to thirty feet. Yeah. That's what it reads. On and the then beach. is that what we want to keep it on at? the beach? Okay. On the beach. Yep. Yes, I think that is a compromise as long as we can partner it with the bubble. Okay. But that only needs in the no. off season. It's only two hours where the dogs have to be on, yeah. on the beaches. So it feels like we're. I mean, what if we did restrict it further in that two hour? I guess it doesn't matter. It's a two hour. I period. actually am with you. I actually like, think it should be like twelve to three. Yeah, a long yeah. period of time. Because you might have families can go kids. to the beach, right? And because in the winter, well, the you can't go to the beach. Back when they were doing that, the people that were taking their hour off from work, they'd like to go to the beach and run their dogs before. So that's why they, they it was 12 to 3. And then they went to one because there was okay. a big well, argument. I, have a three -year -old and I'm I work from home and I take my three year old to the beach at my lunch hour and I don't want my three year old trampled by dogs. Just Playing devil's advocate. Yeah. 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 I yeah. hear you. I, I so, hear you yeah. It just, it's crazy I, that there's only a two hour period where you can bring your kids to the beach. 
And nobody enforces that in the winter. I walk on Pine Point every day and there is dogs off leash all winter long, all day. So what is the non-beach area? Is it the same? Because this was up to 30 Oh yeah, we said athletic only. fields. Well, we said no, well, no athletic fields are clear, like no, none at all, but what is? what about the, like sidewalks or the park? or other parts of town that are public The street, property. like, are you allowed to just walk your dog next to you on the street? I don't know, I guess if it's- No, I don't understand oh. why the 30 foot was even put into this thing. They probably could let dogs run to hit, to talk to point. Maybe in training, but also if, uh, if my dog's gonna run, if she's on an eight foot leash, she's killing me. I'm oh, sure, sure, sure. Backwards, yeah. a 30 foot leash, it's, it gives them a plenty of, it's not as big as you think it is if yeah. you're in an open field. That allows the responsible dog owners who don't have voice control under their dog, like they're right. not, not under voice control, to still allow them to run around in these right. spaces that you have. It's very important to still allow that to happen because those are the people that care and actually follow the right. They follow right. the rules. Right. Right. If they have the 25 foot lead, yeah. they know their dog yeah. is not voice control worthy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But they and they need to be under control, yeah. so they allow that. You just need we need to provide spaces for yeah. opportunity and opportunity yes, for everybody. Mm -hmm. Okay, in Portland, you have a voice control exception rule, whatever it's called. There's voice control, yeah. We have spaces that, um, you're allowed to have your dog on leash, but on voice control or totally no voice control? Dog off leash and mm -hmm. under voice control, but even in the dog park, <laughs> those are off leash areas, but the dog still needs to be under voice control. So to Emily's point, <laughs> this is 612, which is the regulation for parks and rec facilities. There's no mention of dogs in here. So this would be your next point. So that was my next so question. Is that the answer for this, for this, this second point? If that's a separate ordinance. We, so we, we want to stick with this one. Right. Should, that? Yeah, if, we have, if we're restricting, or if we're saying that we can extend the leash to 30 feet facilities. outside of uh, the summer, we said this was a beach only space. Right, but I'm just, to your point, if that's a separate ordinance, should this be renamed Animal Control Ordinance, ordinance Beaches? If well, there's another ordinance for parks and recreation? So there's, I think there's even a greater question is. What's the right protocol? I don't know. Yeah. We can just probably I don't either. speak of that, right? Amanda. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, if, if there is another ordinance that essentially is referencing this one, it's fine albeit confusing as long as it's referencing the sections otherwise it should be i mean i think it makes more sense that animal control ordinance and then you have the definitions and then you have the subsections beaches parks you know mm. other yeah. and then you do it that right. way yeah. and then you can have the penalties and the fees and all of that but and i apologize what'd you say the name of that so this one is chapter 612 which is ordinance creating rules regulations for use in parks and recreation facilities and there's no mentions of dogs in this one or leashes. So then that one of the things we there is we should reference this one. There should just be yep. it's done in their property that yeah. says right. yeah. somehow yeah. 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 I don't know if it's section six oh so four or whatever. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Supposedly on the the Memorial Park basically. have a dog on leash and you're not supposed to false. So that's what that, no, 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 no. Oh, no one has Somebody put them up there because somebody complained. Okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, I thought you could have all dogs. other public spaces. What's the all other public spaces? Do we think we want dogs on leash? Yeah. All yeah. the time. No voice control. I'm asking that question. I don't know. Well, what other what other public spaces are there outside of the beach? Sidewalks, if, Memorial if, Park. What? That's, a, that's probably a bigger question well, than this group. But more say, like, what are all the uh, what are all the public spaces that we're talking? Yeah, about? so you're talking about creating a leash law. Yeah, yeah, independent of where it can happen. Mm. So, like in my mind, if you're talking about creating a leash law that is X, Y, and Z, whatever the factors are, and then you know, depending on where you put it, you make it more restrictive. Okay. At Higgins Beach, yeah. this is it during this date. Yeah. At Memorial okay. Field, it's this during this date. So you're talking about the, the the primary you're talking about a leash law to say year round unless otherwise but this is if you don't put that though it's incomplete because you're they're here that's only addressing beaches it doesn't address the rest of the town i think that's what that's we're, what we're saying. saying is we need to also address the rest of it right right that's what this point is so yes so, so parks and recreate parks and recreation why don't we do that and skip sidewalks for now 
Yeah, because again, you're not. Right. So what if we do parks and athletic fields, yeah. parks and athletic fields? What do we want for that? Right mm -hmm. now, there's no law, right? Well, athletic fields is always restricted. Right. There's dog that, on leash. Did you say that was just school athletic fields or all athletic It's not written in here, though. It's not written. So right. we, need, we need to write in that yes. dogs mm -hmm. are not allowed in these areas. Right. Athletic fields, school yards. I say so you can't, but there's nothing well, in the ordinance well, to say. Okay. Like, that's okay. there's, there's not a different yeah. ordinance that no no this so is the ordinance but it has nothing about dogs because no. like down they, in the they, peterson they, they field they dig them up, they and they go all literally the just bought yeah. new signs that said no dogs allowed on the field okay yeah, yeah. so this would be the actual chance that you're the chances of that being enforced are early in the six o'clock in the morning when people run on that field throwing balls to their dogs and stuff like thirsty yeah well, that's part, 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 school, part of these school are going to be like, metrics. How do we, what recommendations do we make? You know, the source? Still it's it's still I know. I'm saying, yeah. do we distinguish between yeah. school or not? That's all I was asking. No, yeah. it's athletic field, okay. just in yeah. general. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so we have to put in something that says they're not allowed in the space. So even though we could say they are not allowed in the area, the other areas that they are allowed, aka Memorial Park, What's the, what are we what are we saying? Ten feet leash only, all year round. Wasn't that one of the places the suggestion was they would want a longer leash? So yeah, the memorial park. Yeah, yeah. I, I think yeah. all the parks you have to longer. I think all ball. the parks you have to allow the longer yeah. leash, but add in ten feet of personal space. There you right. go. Yeah, because of the up to thirty feet. So low. Yes, Up to yes. 30 okay. feet on the parks, too. Because then that lets me run my dog, but yeah. then I need yeah. to keep away from yeah. Well, essentially, yeah. all, well, but by that rule, though, if you're saying all other prop, all other town property, I could have a 30 foot leash on the sidewalk with my dog. Well, no, so that's separate. So <laughs> sidewalks are a whole different ballgame. Yeah, and they sidewalks. may not be under our purview. Why? Because they're right? privately owned. If it's on your, what's the sidewalk? No, they should be like an eight, it, that should be an eight foot leash. That's at all times, so you yeah. shouldn't have. So, do we need a third to 30 feet in the parks, aka Memorial yeah, Park? We have anything on them, and then what Is about the road purview? Alex, I don't know. I'd have to do, I don't know enough about. Let's put a question mark on that. I feel like they could have been, yeah, right, yeah, or just walking. If you're, I mean, let's you let's put a question mark, you, right? All right, so right now, I have. Ten, up to a 10 foot leash, beaches only April 1st to Labor Day. That's the summer. Yeah. Up to 30 feet, beaches only after Labor Day to March 30th. Up to 30 feet in town parks and areas, up to eight feet sidewalks. But 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 you have them off leash anyway. So who's gonna put on a 30 foot unless you're training? Then then that's that's it's given it. the, but see, but the, the caveats see, that I think I don't know who just said it. The caveats are you still have to be under voice control. Right. And and I, I would vote that we get rid of sight control and just say within sight. Yeah. Sight of your dog at all times because control is sight control is a false narrative of like yeah. voice control. Your dog needs to be within sight under voice control at all yeah, times. Yeah. Super yeah. Man, I yeah. 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 I see you and she's gonna stop. <laughs> yeah. You know, take the control. It's a false tense. Well, and it's not just bring your dog back, it's like the person the non-owner in the bubble needs to say it's okay for them to enter your bubble, which also makes this murky. Wait, so let's, so yes, we have anything leash. else for leash? Thanks for keeping us full. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> anything well, else I don't understand the roads. What do you so, do on a road? Like, that's a eight, so it's eight feet on, I just looked up what ours is, but it's on public, on the public street or publicly owned property unless controlled by a leash of not more than eight feet. Like, so public street. So does that cover everything that covers public street, including street? sidewalk, I would say. Yeah, I think people would want clarification. Including just like where you drive your car. <laughs> right, including sidewalk. Yeah. So this is streets, sidewalks, parks, uh, beaches. We have any other property that's not covered under those? How was um was the Eastern yeah. Trail? Thank you. Um, I was you just going to ask that. No, I was just thinking that. That's why I said that. Um, 
is that that's not ours to worry about, is it? Well, it's the Eastern Trail Management District. We maintain and enforce it and put up signs and so say Scarborough. I, can yeah. we have a representative to the Eastern Trail? KCR Parks Manager. So if there's things that we want to, we can work through him if it's different to say, hey, we're doing this throughout town with that consideration there I, as well. I would maybe do it the same as a sidewalk because it's sort of the same width. Right. It's sort of a, a, a walking path. Right. So right. maybe within eight feet. So, Are both of these points all year round? Yes. So, yes. yes. I, I guess I would, um, for simplicity, entertain uh just making it eight versus ten and eight because right now we got 30 oh you're right eight. yeah you know yeah. what i mean yes yeah. making it so 10 uh, no eight. Eight. eight eight so make it 38 and eight so the eastern really the ten trail eight. rules i can find online were updated in 2012 okay but to the extent that they're accurate they don't give a blank that says pets must be leashed and under the control of their owners at all times do no. not they're already a leash then yeah, it doesn't give it a, like a length or anything, but it does require a leash. Yeah. So that's more of a restriction than we just put up there. Well, in no. some ways, yes, but in some ways, no. We because right. they have to, they could have a thirty foot leash. Yeah. We have a seventy foot leash. Right. We can be yeah. more uh, restricted. The key is under left. control. Right. You know what I mean, the yep. key is under control because, again, not to not to burst anybody's bubble, but. I'm not going to ask my rangers to go 10 feet, Measure. 12 feet. Yeah. It's going to be Measure. when I walk by you, yeah. am I not bothering you? Right, exactly. Yeah, you know I mean? yeah. Or, you know, when you see somebody's reaction, like, if you know, this is what we started talking about today a little bit. If I'm walking, even if I'm, you know, if far as running from me, that means get your dog away from me. And because, or if I like, I put my hand out, that means I want your dog to sniff me. Like, so... Part of that is you're never going to write all that down, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? But right. that's what they're mm -hmm. right. going to need to be. Right. And their job is to then educate people. Hey, you know what? Your dog is really great, but did you notice that mom picked up her kid and went the other way? Like that outreach and education before we have to enforce. And so those yeah. are things we're kind of talking about. But know. by by simplifying all of this so that they know all of it makes it easier yes. to educate. And that's why I think yeah. the 30 and the 8 yeah. makes yeah. sense. Yeah, Because yeah. then Absolutely. it's road and sidewalk. Yeah. So this Absolutely. theoretically covers all property all year long. Yep. Cool. Thanks, Good. Emily. Voice control? Do we need to find that? I think it should be 50 feet away from the person. If you want to restrict a little bit more of what voice control it is, you could add a, uh, a distance uh, yeah. away from the away from the yeah. person. So you're not at the say you're at Pine Point Beach and there's a dog. Running through yards away, yeah. and there's the owner yeah. that way. Yeah. It's yeah. kind of an easy. Um, well, what we see a lot in Higgins there. is uh, five to 10 people congregating on the beach, jabbing, drinking yep. coffee. Yep. And those all have ten, one dog, and those dogs are packing. One end of the beach to the other, and they and you can't stop them because yeah. they're yeah. all they're, and and they're they're not certainly under voice control. Right. What do we do there? I mean, yeah. that's up to yeah. the, yeah. So, that's up and to that's why I think point. the clarification. And so I was going to say this at the end of the meeting, but what I would hope I, you would let me do is be able to take these kind of recommendations and go meet with a dog group yep. and say, okay, yeah. here's yeah. what we're talking yeah. about. Like, yep. How much hardship, like. Not play yep. poker, but like, you know what I'm saying? Like be able to have a yep. conversation because yep. we are trying to find middle ground mm -hmm. before another recommendation needs to be made. Because when I put the Rangers on the ground, they're going to start. That should come back because, again, they're not voice control. Right. You know, he may go up to them and yeah. say, listen, call your dog. Can we define this? Yeah. The language that's in the current one is how it's defined in multiple jurisdictions, which is the dog returns immediately to and remains by the side of the responsible party in response to the responsible party's purpose. But it also says site in addition to this. That's in a separate sentence. A, so yeah. in terms of defining voice control, that's... that's, that's, that's do we want to use the term voice control? Do we want to switch to site or use... No. Well, you don't want to use control and under. What did you say? It was perfect. Um, yeah, I think... And that, within site or something? Within, within site. But again, if like if Alex, if you want to go more restrictive, you could say 
within a distance rather than sight. Mm. Voice control with that full definition that Amanda just read right. within 50 feet, within 100 feet, yeah. and, and eliminate the sight control. Yeah. 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 Sight. Cool. You don't have to be, mm, That's what I'm saying. 300 yards. Might have to hear you. Still within sight. That's what yeah. I'm saying. They can hear you, but so yeah. Okay. So yeah. give me that one more time in a sentence. It's right. The now. definition. Or it's what's in the ordinance. It's already in the ordinance, okay. ordinance but okay. we want to say Adding within 50 feet. Within 50 feet of the owner. Which uh, page, please? Oh, two, page two. Section, section 14. 14. Yeah. And then the belt. And remove right. any site control records of like a second sentence. <laughs> Obviously, this is another section where it's a definition, so we should take out what a violation means and put that some level, but. It also says, and again, this is consistent with a number of other jurisdictions, is if a dog approaches or remains within 10 feet of any person other than the responsible party, they're not under it, unless the person is indicated, right. which is involved. Yeah, and that's a good point that the standard is they're not allowed to be within 10 feet of another person. Unless. Unless right. you let them. So it's not like they can be in your bubble unless you tell them no. You have to get permission before they run it's into never. Yeah. They can't be closer than 10 feet without permission. Yeah. Like right. And, it, and again, <laughs> I'm not disagreeing. I'm just trying to be realistic. Like, how am I going to enforce, enforce it? Because what we're working on is also in the background of what the rules are in creating etiquette standards, because that's most of the issue. Yeah. It's, yeah. you know, um, it's not the rule. It's yeah. do you understand the etiquette about it? Do not let your... Do not let your dog within 10 feet of a person unless they're at, given permission. Right. Do not tell me your dog is friendly as they approach me and my kid jumps all over. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. my, that should be one. Right. I don't want to hear it one more time that right. your dog is friendly. Right. Accolades about your dog are not considered voice control. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so we need to add in, I think, another mm -hmm. sentence that said, and the owner can view the dog or the, the owner, dog. The dog has to be within 50, 50 feet of the owner. Can this be accomplished through a definition? Definition 604 4 is at large dogs. Dogs shall be considered at large unless you open the voice, the dog sight. Mm -hmm. Can voice sight be under within 50 feet of honor? What number was that? 14. 14. You need to take out all the plane control stuff and add in this. Oh, yeah. got it. Thank you. Like a state statute that's at large means off the premises of the owner and not under the control of any person's personal presence and attention would reasonably control the conduct of the animal. But there, there's also a split definition between dog owner and responsible party, mm -hmm. which is not consistent either. So that also you mean within here? Yes, mm -hmm. which also means. Do we have this is a dumb question? Do we have this as a word document or is it just PDF? I think it was sent the word document. Yeah, it is a word. It's like a Google Thank app, you. Right? Yeah. 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 Yep. It's in the folder. So that technically, we could track about. changes and yeah. send this to the ordinance. Well, talk yeah. to Karen, send it to the ordinance committee and say, here's yeah. exactly. I nominate Amanda to hit that up. <laughs> I, would, I, I love the idea of you said Yeah. Did that, you know, having something that's one more readable for the people that are going to read it. <laughs> um, and when somebody's being questioned, just they can educate themselves. So if I can go right down the like the definitions, I like the actions. Yes, it doesn't need to be complicated. It just needs to be there. And I think this is very confusing. Okay, so we've defined voice control. The dog returns immediately to and remains by the side of the responsible party. In response to the responsible party's verbal command, the dog has to be within fifty feet of the responsible. Party. To be considered under. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That dog all. has to be within 50 feet of the responsible party at, at all times. Okay. Clear. Not just when they go to call it to come over. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And those are, that's what my guy crew means. Yeah. Simple definitions. Yeah. That's easy to explain. No, no argument over intent. Good. Sure. It is best to have strict life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's what I want to look like it. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Okay. Uh, the bubble. Well, can we? Oh, sorry. Wait, uh, we go, somebody had mentioned the dog owner responsibility. We'll go back to that after. So the responsible party. Oh, yeah. Fit, yeah. Look at that definition. Yeah. But well, we have the bubbles in this one, though, right? 
Yeah. It's still important. The bubble is the next thing. Yeah. Alex, have you heard like of a better word for the bubble? Leash with one separate point and the thing called. Yeah. 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 It's a hard one. That is. Yeah. That's, that's, that's a new one for me. We're going to stick with bubble. And yeah, uh, like we're going to find a new term. Amanda was going to put it in the original. Well, I mean, you could just call it. Personal space, space as defined, you know, and then we define it within this. Story. Yeah, personal space is good. Yeah, I like it. Really? I mean, I like you writing bubble. And <laughs> I could use that. Yeah. <laughs> a non-dog owner personal space. Non-responsible party, right? Because the uh, responsible party right. takes their dog to the beach. Maybe it's not the right. owner. Mm -hmm. Not yep. Okay. But again, I think that when we look at the parks as a whole, too, I think the ten foot. Personal space, ring, bubble, whatever you want to call it. Personal yeah. space it, barrier. Yeah. Ooh, it, yeah. There you go. It, it'll start translating more because the same thing happens if I'm having a picnic and your dog zip through. It's one thing if I call over your dog and I want to pet them, but they're sitting on my blanket, you know, and so it's, you know, th there is personal space everywhere mm -hmm. yeah. and the, the dog is not outside of it. Yeah. And I feel like people are more aware you're, you're of that. You're going to be able to use COVID this anyway. really. Like, on everything not that we were talking about. That's why I think we okay. need to pass. Well, no, <laughs> yeah. 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 So what we, what's going under the non-responsible party's personal space? <laughs> Very That's a tongue twister. Non-responsible. So I wrote bubbles. Yeah, yeah we're, we're working on it. We're we're uh, <laughs> workshopping it. Yeah. Um so we we wanted to keep the distance that that person is in the middle of the circle, the circle around them is 10, 10 feet. feet. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so you would say. Your dog is only allowed to approach. It's a dog should be no closer than yeah. 10 feet to the non responsible party unless permission has been granted. Mm -hmm. Dog should, one more time, not be closer. The dog should be no closer than 10 feet. Closer than 10 feet to the non to, to the, a non-responsible party, probably because there could be multiple. Yeah, right. To right. any non-responsible party, right. we can work on that. Any non-responsible, unless permission has first been granted. Given. Permission. Because I think permission first is also key. Not that's what I. The dog thinking. runs over, and then they realize right. it's unwanted, and call the dog back because that's the situations you described can occur. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna make sure, like, my dog's friendly. Do you want to see it? No. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Right. Why is it necessary to put non-responsible party in there? Because that the responsible party is technically the person. dog walker or the yeah. owner. Person. It's like if my, I don't know, my mom takes my dog to the beach. It's not her dog, but she's the responsible party for the dog at that. No, but the red and call point is. So Sorry. Can you just call any person? Yeah, that, that's what a responsible party is obviously going to be to have their own dog near them. Right. So, so yeah, dog shall be no, should be no just in the definition 10 foot to any, any person. person. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, just exactly. change the definition. But clean the, it up, simple eyes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's easier to say. Mm -hmm. um, dog should not, should, should. Dog should be no closer, no closer than ten foot to any person unless unless that person has right. Okay. Has and are you assuming this is going to sound really stupid? But the owner has granted permission to the dog, or do you need to say other than the dog's owner or responsible party? Just for extra clarification, you mean like unless permission has first been granted? No, but if person? I read that, it, dog should be no closer than ten feet to any person. That could be me. I could be the person. Could be me, the dog owner, oh, unless permission yeah. has been granted. I know it's implied, but if we're going well, that's to, why I had initially said non-responsible party, but we could just clarify to and, any person, yeah. and then in parentheses almost, other than the dog. I, I know it's implied. Maybe I'm. I maybe I'm just right because well, someone might laugh at that and say, person. "Oh, they can't be closer to to me." To like me, the dog market, owner, really? Like, yeah, that's kind of like that rule dog. is null and void because Correct. it makes no logical sense. I, it's I'm yeah. thinking of the snarky response. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's better to be clear. So it's it kind of negates different. what we just told you to do. But finally. if the person is walking the dog, presumably they have been first 
granted they have uh what did i say right right they i know it's implied that's my point no i'm saying it's not even implied it's, i'm saying it fits it's, the definition it fits the definition if i'm walking the dog then that means i have given permission for the dog to approach me. right right that's what i but mean but if it makes sense to clarify it is what trisha's saying i right. think it does so put it back just put the but in parentheses other than the responsible party which After, well you have a definition against. saying about the owner well, if you just put the owner. You... Well, we were trying to make it in case someone's. Well, but it might or... not be the owner. Emily's exactly. mom lost her. Emily's but yeah, mom. but she's still uh, responsible. Responsible, the responsible person. The thing, right. There, owner. Right. there was a split definition so, yeah, of yeah. dog owner slash responsible yeah. party. Yeah. Emily, what you're really saying is, dogs should be no closer than ten feet to any person unless that person gives permission first. Yeah. Yes, who the dog is a first. So, yeah. Definitely. Okay, anymore. dog should be no closer than ten feet to any person unless <laughs> that person <laughs> gives permission. Correct. I still think you're going to get some people who are going to comment and say, "But I'm the dog owner. That's ridiculous. Of course, I gave it permission." I'm and then just saying. Those are the ones that don't follow. No, but that's when you say, "Good. I'm glad that you did it." Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Okay. So the non-responsible party, personal space, and the person is in the center of the circle. There should be ten feet around that person, and dogs should be no closer than ten feet to any person unless that person gives permission first. Just no matter how friendly your dog is. Just kidding, I'm being snarky. Now I'm being snarky. <laughs> Good. Regardless yeah. of the dog's temperament. <laughs> Actually, it's not bad. <laughs> I think remember that for other sections. Yeah. I yeah. Think, yeah. Or I think that we make those comments when we talk about etiquette. Yeah. Because yeah. I think those are nice things to have in bullets. Like, regard, we're going to try to make signs positive, regardless of your, your dog's good nature. Yeah. Right? I like that. We, yeah. You know, we please re, please refrain from ten feet without face. Yeah. Ten feet without entrance or permission. Actually, that's a really good point. Like maybe we should put that when you reorganize it. Dog etiquette, like that, sounds more than instead of restricted. And like this is enforcement, and that's why I think the etiquette piece is the yeah. yeah. Etiquette piece agree. is what's really yeah. going to move the needle. Right. You know, when you can surf, what's when you can't. Right. Because I'm going to say, thank you. That's awesome. Versus right. stop telling me I can't be a right. 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 You know, so. You got to give the good. Give the yeah, good. Exactly. And, you know. have oh. Yeah. Yeah. Until you have to crack the whip, right? Until yeah. I say no. <laughs> <laughs> Don't ask why. Okay. So based off of conversation, we've made, want to make recommendations to leashes, their length and their locations and timing around town. Uh, further define the definition of voice control, uh, define or or add in personal uh, personal space as well as uh, locations that dogs are not. Was there anything yeah. else? If we are going to include um, parks, et cetera, et cetera, I see that beach is defined in here. Do we also need to define those? Does anyone think so? I, What's your recommendation? If we define what we need to define, yeah. yeah. So if we define beach, then we also have to I define highlight and root parts down. Yeah. If we were going to take this and make a singular document, yeah, you know what I mean. But we can hijack the language from that. Thing. Right. I mean, I well, think... if you reference the other one, does the other one specify mm -hmm. what they are, and then you would reference the yeah. dog yeah. part to here, or we just take are there the certain section? things they can go over? Like, why do we need a definition of a dog? Why do we need a definition of a beach? <laughs> So and should it should not be dog, should it be yeah. pet oh, it should right. be animal. Yeah. animal. Because didn't you say you had cats on beaches? Yeah, that's why. So, <laughs> so I haven't seen it yet, but um, some of the Higgins residents and the dog groups right now are working through the Blubber Ordinance to clean up some of the language. And I'm there, I don't think it's finalized yet, but they've had like two or three good meetings about. So I think that once they do that, some of that will translate down yeah. to us to be able to make modifications here. But just in this chapter uh, 612, just definitions, it has the same definition at the beach. Um, someone asked. Uh, uh, yes, and then there's a park definition. So why don't we just say something like as defined in and we could reference that? Or yes. Yeah. 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 And, and, mm -hmm. I, and I need to spend some time with this one because, again, I've got and not for tonight, but I've got tobacco and smoking area questions that 
they're conflicting in multiple things. And so I'd like your opinion on with which side of the road we should be on and which location um, that needs just some cleaning up. Um, yeah, because there's town park means a park owned and operated by the town of Scarborough versus a general park. Oh my God. Uh, so, okay, back to Anna. There's some cleaning okay. up that needs to happen. Keep it focused. We'll get in there. Okay. So, <laughs> I, I think there is a lot of cleaning up in general that needs to be done in this and like a man of like the reorganizing a lot of stuff, um, like changing dog to animal. And um, I think the last thing we have to do is define uh, dog, re responsible dog owner to like responsible animal owner or and, and define that. And then I think these essentially would be our recommendations to the ordinance committee, but as a whole, all of those things, the, the rest of the remaining community here should be cleaned up, reorganized and further defined. Mm -hmm. But yes. this is a whole is what would come from the committee. I do think I would recommend or suggest that maybe we look at the fees. Oh yeah, the, fees, the, okay. fines. the fines. I'm sorry. I, yeah, I also fine. thought when we reorganized, which I didn't go through, I just thought that was really confusing. Like impoundment when the dog gets returned, when it doesn't get returned, that was probably just me. But I do think we don't need to deal with that now. But I think the fines. Yeah, they say fee. You're right, though. I apologize, mm -hmm. Trish. They do say fee, not fine. A and fee of a return fee of fifteen dollars. That's nothing. But they also there's also the dif difference between um, if a dog gets uh, impounded versus, right, and right, and there's was, no consistency. I thought that that 604, 5, 6, 7 were confusing. Disposition, what the impoundment fee is, an impoundment or return, whether it was returned or impounded. Yeah. And I think the fees are too low. So can we jump to the re defining this first and then we can jump to fees? Do we have to? Are there impoundments happening? So we, um, no, I, is that this, that is usually the same? Well, it depends, it depends yeah. what we mean by it, but there's an like the too. ACO takes the dog like into custody, and right. then there's like there's an order with a judge that it be right. I mean, how, how yeah, frequently is that happening to where it actually I'm, my child yeah. had been taken twice two years ago because she took off and she was down the road, and somebody called, and within five seconds, the ACO had her, and I paid 40 bucks to get her back. Uh, so maybe there is an impoundment. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm pretty sure. And again, I, once you guys kind of frame up what you're Facebook thinking, post. I would then want to meet with ACO oh. and the police department because mm -hmm. that's in their wheelhouse. And these fines are consistent with yeah. state statute and other jurisdictions. Yeah. I really, I yes, I had to prosecute these in uh, Cape Elizabeth. Fifteen dollars for the impoundment, yeah, but just like even the violations, the fifty dollars, the hundred dollars, and all that. That's Consistent because just in relation to fines that people get on more serious charges, like there's a mandatory three hundred dollar fine on assault. So like if you go up and punch another person in the face, absent them having disfiguration, it's a three hundred dollar fine. So like putting in perspective what dog fines are. All right, then yeah, but you still could do that to a kid. But then there would be a charge a for that, and mm. that's a different charge. Different All right, so leave okay. the fees so alone. Severity of don't, don't touch fees. Yeah. Okay. Don't touch fees. I, okay. I think personally they're too low, but based on what Amanda said, leave them alone. Okay, so we want to we want to define or change this instead of it being oh, responsible party or responsible dog owner, whatever we want this to be, <laughs> which would be 12 and 13. Or the like everything in here needs to be changed like from dog, dog to animal. animal. Yep. That's a big one. My pet iguana. <laughs> My pet Dirty foot leash. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that part of the conversation <laughs> happened. I was at the range now as far as I don't know. Animal definition of the range. Like why there is a range. What was that again? I will say anything to do with an animal in the state seems to have a range, like Title 12, all the like fishing and hunting type stuff. There's often a range as well, no less than this, but no more than that. And I can't tell you the legislative intent behind it, but in Title 12 and Title 7, it's incredibly mm -hmm. common. I think do you it's, know what you're going to do for these. Like, do you have a set number that you're going to? Because we right? don't, this is that PD and it goes to court. PD. Yeah, PD That's and court. Right. So we don't have that permission. We can only do parking. And I think why there's a range in most cases because something when you have to enforce, if it's a 13 year old kid that first time screwed up, I'm hitting him with a minimum. If if Art's been done it 10 times, this is the third one, he's getting the max fine for yeah. not having a fishing license or mm -hmm. you know, there's ways. So there's ways to like 
to work with that too though. So, I mean, I like, I would prefer that there's just one number and not a range. I think that's, it's kind of funky, but I get mm -hmm. what, I, would just I mean, <laughs> I mean, if we set like a set, if we just had like a set number, but then in terms of the prosecution side or the court piece of it, we set, we settle with folks if they are, uh, if you find them $75 for a dog violation, they can pay half of that if they just pay it now. That's what I parked it up and it's done. That's what I parked it So, for example, let's say somebody gets a, a civil violation summons for one of these. They can go online and pay in advance, and there is yeah. a one stop yeah. shop yeah. set mm -hmm. waiver fee, and they never have to no go to court. court. Yeah. This is if you go to court and we're negotiating, like this is your wiggle room. Also, Portland has a town prosecutor that will handle their ordinances, yeah. and a lot of towns don't. And so then the state prosecutors have to do it. So, mm -hmm. moving on from fine. <laughs> yeah, we are moving on. So, cool. what is your <laughs> Emily? What do you? There's a responsible. I think renaming an animal should be completely eliminated, and responsible parties should be defined in one sentence because the information here is repetitive and confusing, yes. and it's defined in other sections of it. Yeah. Well, except that the last sentence under responsible party, if a dog is present on the beach in violation of the restrictions, the owner of the dog and the responsible party are jointly and separately liable. Mm -hmm. So, they there are. There's other places that says owner too about like if the owner has been warned before the owner's property. Right. So I well, so owner I think should be changed to responsible party mm -hmm. and everything where it says dog should be changed to animal. But there might be a distinction between owner and right. That's what I'm party saying. that we need to make. I yeah. I don't I, I think it's whoever is in possession of the of the animal at the time is responsible, whether they're the owner or not. Yeah, yeah that's there's, a, there's a separate liability issues. Yeah, there's issues. Just, right. There's, there's, there's a full restrictive because it, I give you my dog, right? And you're taking for a walk, and she she goes and 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 Alan's thing. Yet when I find out the dog is mine, I've done it ten times. I'm getting fined, and right. then you're getting fined. Right. So that's this why you need two people. We need yeah. two people. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Two definitions. Two definitions. It's more restrictive this way for that reason to punish the owner. Right, yeah. because the owner shouldn't be giving it to right. the someone who doesn't care. Exactly. Right. So you could just rename it responsible animal owner and responsible party and i think it's valid the way it is right and then under responsible party instead of say custody say custody of animal yes custody of the animal yeah and if the animal is present on a beach in violation of the right wherever it says dog say and then we just need to check where these two definitions oh, are referenced. it says if a dog is present on a beach should it be on any of the impacted areas do we need to change that verbiage Yes, like in a park or Where the other places. Are you yeah. page 13, two. Um, on page two, under the oh. responsible party, it says the dog is present on a beach. But we're now saying other areas, right? The dog is present. Yeah. So we're going to change at least at a location. Yeah. yeah. If an animal is present at a location, do we need to at say a town, maybe a town location or something? Public or like public location. Public location. Yeah. Um, so for number 12, change responsible dog owner to responsible animal, animal owner. Number 13, change responsible party to responsible party in possession of the animal. Right. Okay. And then change any where it says uh, just a beach to, to the beach. like location, like, or, or town property, uh, and then change dog to animal. So what should so we want to say public property? Because like side streets are some of them are owned by the state. So if we say town, when we talk about sidewalk, I hate to public, be splitting public, hairs, public but it should property. be public public property. So anywhere that names something specific, like a beach or a park, should be changed to public property. Okay. So specific for you, Todd? I think that's probably about as clean if you're gonna do yeah. it. Okay. The specific site, i.e. a beach, and change to public property. And we know there's the section 10 that says owns and then there's responsible dog owner. So we can take out owner. I think we can take out number owner. 10 up here is owner. Eliminate that. It's repetitive as to what's in responsible dog owner for purposes of this. That yeah, that's what I'm saying. It defines two different there, it has two yeah. different definitions. I don't know why I hadn't seen that part before. I'd only seen these other ones. So I said that's why I'm probably confused when you were mentioning it earlier. Why are we changing dogs to animals? Because the cats on the beach. You don't like them to cats. 
cats don't go hunting. Oh, and yeah, yeah. Cats aren't under voice control, and I mean, there's just a whole bunch of things in here that don't pertain to any other animal but a duck. That's what I wanted to like just scratch that perspective because if people bring anything that's not a dog on the piece, the rules are still still need to apply to them. But the, whether they're the crimes that exist have dog in them, so I guess it's a question of of that distinction, right? Like of town leash rules compared to like dog at large or nuisance dog or whatever they are, because like cause the statutes are specific to the dog. Like if your pig was off leash, like you, they couldn't. Like nothing to enforce. There is no. right. Is I mean, do we have a concern about other animals? That's what I was just going to say. Most of the issues are dog related, so mm -hmm. maybe we do have to backtrack and just do dog. Yeah, I, I can I can reach out again to see where the plumber group is on definitions. I know they were looking at some definitions. Um, yeah, but that was the, the that was playing around the you know uh, spike ball and stuff like that. They wanted to put a perimeter around. They weren't looking at dog versus animal. No, okay. they had, no there was no mention to dog okay. at all. So maybe we do need to stick with dogs. Yeah. So, so get rid of there. this. Um, this would, the, the, so number 13 would still be the same, which is instead of responsible party, it's responsible party in possession of the animal. And then 12 would stay the same, which is responsible dog owner. Correct? Yep. I was when she said the pigs. I'm like, what that? Is that okay? Like, do the cats that go into the ocean and But they're going to say, well. So, even though we have all of these bullet points, we know that the whole ordinance needs to be improved. Reorganized. Yes. So, does the ordinance committee do that? Or do we? Make it look pretty and give it to them and say, "Here, we did all of the work already. Just accept." I think we we put it together and propose it to them. I think that would we put it to, we yeah. put it together and present it to Karen, our liaison. Yeah, yeah. let her. But we reshape it. Yeah. I'm, so I'm saying, like, in addition to the the points that we have, mm -hmm. we say yes. these are the large ones. Like, we go in and essentially rewrite the entire ordinance and say, here's what we so came you up clarify with. it. So the framework would be definitions, take other restrictions, which is what you said. Then mm -hmm. what's the next section? Action. Like, so we, after definitions, that you you can start having um, like then the, then it's the rules. Then it's the violations. Okay. okay. So mm -hmm. it's definition, rules, and violations. Violations are not in the past. Yeah. And then appendix is anything that's informational. Yeah. So who actually does this? Us, your staff? Who? That's what I was asking. Like, if we, yeah. like, we have the Google Doc going, and essentially, if we go in and track changes and then, and show, you know, show the, the markings and then present. That document with the track changes of what has been changed to include these points and fix the mess that it is, and then give it to Karen. So I go back to nominating. With I the, think that makes the most the sense instead of involving a whole nother section of people. Yep. yep. Fine. Amanda, how do you feel about that? That's fine. Is that okay? Does anybody want to help Amanda? Yeah, I'm happy to chime in as far as like. Yeah. I can take a first go at it and then send it Are you, is she going to make all these or is she going to? Okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I can say you're going to make that these end up in the minutes. I don't have to remember it or else I'm going to take a picture right now. Uh, <laughs> both. I say both. Yeah. Um, so they're pretty much in the minutes. So you might be able to just copy and paste. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, so it'd be reorganizing the uh, current <laughs> ordinance, uh, changing the, the definitions that are in there. And then adding in the, these new recommendations in your respective mm -hmm. places. So I'd say you can give it a first go around. Let us know when you have it to that point. We can all give a yeah. look over and then we can forward it on to care. That's perfect timing. I just finished rewriting my son's school's uh, school board bylaws. Now it. Oh my God. Fun <laughs> things going on in your life, huh? <laughs> so, how are we feeling about this? Good. Great. 
better. So yeah. I think it's just the first item on our. That was the first item. I just have one more. No, is that the first item on the July agenda? I was going to say, let's manage my expectations. When do you want this done? We got to so look, look at it in July. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, so we'll move we'll by the next July. Or you, oh, or, you, okay. or you could start the conversation. You know what I mean? Or if you have it. Or what if we, I mean, we have two months, so like, sent it out halfway through or whatever. if you, yeah. if you like, let's say it took a month to do it, sent it out halfway through, we looked it out before the July meeting. And then if anybody like make any edits, and then if anybody has anything outstanding to do, to add in at the July meeting, we can discuss it then. And then from July, send it to Karen. Sure. Does that work yeah. for you? Your schedule? Yep. Yeah. That's just should, should be doing that. So that can be added. Still get enough time to start the fee discussion. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we'll still keep that. I have one other under six zero four nine dealing with animal waste. Mm -hmm. The last sentence. I'm sure there are legal things for that, but the regulation shall not apply to any person who, by reason of physical handicap, is unable to comply with the requirement. Mm -hmm. It's an unnecessary sentence considering it's a fine. That's what I. That's what I. I said, can we, do we need that sentence? And I guess I just have a problem with that. I don't want to discriminate against anyone, but. No, it's actually rude. I think the first sentence says an owner must remove and dispose of any feces left by his or her animal. Right. And then to reference a person with a handicap, I right. think it's offensive to have anger. Right. Mm -hmm. It's just my two cents. Right. So can we, does anyone have other comments? No, I think it's a given. Like if you have an animal, you need to be responsible. Yeah. Okay. And so I would argue that you're talking about people in your family. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I would suggest <laughs> taking that out. And then, sorry, the last thing I want to say about this is the off season still feels. Into like, yeah. Well, and we don't have to, you know, this will be our first pass, but the off season. So you get two hours. To be on the beach if you don't want to be like at a dog park essentially and it's not i mean it's the off season but it's nine months out of the year uh so your proposal would to ex extend that time period my proposal would be yeah we need more times where people can be on the beach without the dogs running laps around them sure. however i know that that's a bigger issue and we should get this maybe this is our first pass and we i will share with you guys a couple meetings ago when we first started talking about that, i drafted kind of an action plan and there was a lot of blank spots because we talked about how to move those pieces and then what you the actions you want to take to do it um i think we should brainstorm a little bit because i know in some communities there's multiple beaches they may say this beach is wide open this one is restricted you know what i mean so yes you may have to go to the other side of town but now I have a place I can walk all day, but yet Pine Point is a dog beach and Higgins, you know, whatever. So I think we, if, if there's problems that we have versus ruling them, let's figure out if there's other positive ways to not restrict it, but maybe minimize. Because then, like when I was reading uh, a lot of the stuff up in Canada and, and then on the West Coast, a lot of it was restricted areas within areas. So like, give an example, more in a park. You can be in the park, but not in the field. You know, you could be... Uh, they have these large wooded tracks and there is literally a ticked flag line down the middle. This is me. This is you with your dog. You know what I mean? So I know I'm not going to step a dog do and my kids aren't going to jump down, but we both get the same experience. I'm not saying we need to go to that realm, but I think kind of that line of thinking may allow us to solve some of these rather than saying no and having time frames. Maybe it's mm -hmm. a site versus a that sounds location. good to me. Make Fairy Point the dog beach, make yeah. Higgins the tourist beach, and make Pine yeah. Point the resident beach. Yeah. Problem solved. That sounds good. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just I'm there. There. <laughs> let's so the like voice control and non responsible party personal space. So the <laughs> voice control within 50 feet is all year long, correct? Mm -hmm. So that's a big change that we're talking about. Yep. Like we need to move the needle versus right. change yes, the game. Yes, yes, yes. So that's a good <laughs> yeah. reminder to myself. Yeah. And yeah. same with the non-responsible parties, yeah. personal bubble. That's a huge, that would make, uh, if people adhere to it or whatever, it works the way we think. And that's huge. Having enforcement. Right. And so mm -hmm. part of the ranger right. pilot program right. for me is, and I keep saying this and this needs to come out of your mouths too, is if this works, most of our challenges aren't from July to September because the beaches are so busy. It's when all the staff goes away and there's no yeah. parking enforcement and no right. reserves and no ranger. Right. So the goal for me is 
if this works, how do we extend it longer right. and longer and longer until ultimately we have enforcement and education 12 months of the year? Because most of the problems I get are in October and November before it snows. Right. And then again in February and March when everybody's coming out of hibernation. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. that's so when we get the majority. This of the is dogs. our first pass, and you were going to run it by the dog people. Yeah. So maybe we just put a little asterisk that that might be. Yeah, I think this conversation. conversation. Yeah. But I think these are a big enough change. But reasonable change. Yes. yes. Not yeah. drastic. So I think we have a, a really good plan going forward. Amanda's going to take the lead on making some changes, send it to us halfway through. Everybody can have edits. Yep. The editable version with Trish and I's comments is in the uh in yeah, the folder. I have that. Okay, great. So I would say you can edit and track right from there and okay. let everybody else. So theoretically, everybody can also access it at any time when she goes through stuff. I'll let you know um, what I've done so that things don't get changed while I'm in the middle of it. <laughs> um, but I think we could end this point for now and, and move on and just give uh, some updates for the community center and confirm our meeting when we're done. Yep. Agreed. Cool. See you going. Have a yeah. good dinner. Um, thank you. Thank you. Um, sorry, I have to leave early. Um, I just want to make one recommendation before I leave uh, for future meetings, maybe at the top of the agenda, that because we're being recorded, we do introductions. Oh. So if anyone's going to watch, they know who we are or do a roll call doing essentially the same thing. Yeah. For Good point. suggestion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks Robert. Yep. Have fun. Can I talk to me for a community center update? You guys. <laughs> <laughs> So we canceled our last meeting and we just canceled our upcoming meeting. So, oh, what, oh wow. So, for, for, for good reasons. One is our last meeting, we were, the agenda was reviewing the open house finding um, and we didn't have enough to have a forum, so we canceled. Um, we were supposed to have a meeting on Monday um, and it was supposed to be reviewing construction costs and we're expecting to get those tomorrow. So there was no way to package them and get them out ahead of time. So we're looking to try to find another. We put a tentative date of June 4th, but I'm getting a lot of response if people are available. So we may have to put a quick poll out there. Um, but where we are in the community center and really in a five-step process is the committee has worked through all the work and they have a program of what's in the building. They've worked through uh, what the operational cost it's going to cost to run a building of 75 or so thousand square feet. They've completed um, what the revenue expectations are. And we're between, I think it's 89 and 93% mm. self-funded as an operation. That's not build cost, but that's operation. The fourth piece is what we're going to be working on at the next meeting is we are getting a um, cost estimate from the consultants on what it would cost to build the design of choice on uh, the site where the ice rink and maintenance shop and Wentworth Field is. Uh, with that construction, it'll be broken out estimate where we'll get it where it's cost to build the building, site work separately, and then replacement of amenities. So like the field will have to be moved up and so that'll have to be rebuilt. So we should be seeing all those costs. So when people say, this is what it costs, it should be, this is what it costs. Um, I left a meeting today. We're starting to look at traffic a little bit and have those discussions. Should we invest in it? Because if we can't solve those, then that site may not work. Mm -hmm. So we're deciding when to push that button, but I met with the town engineer today on that. Um, and then the fifth step would be once that all gets kind of approved by the ad hoc committee, then UTL will go through and do the full schematic plan and visuals. So when they present the report in July, I think to council, it'll be everything that they need for a complete building to be able to bring to the voters if they so choose. When they in so November, choose. you're gonna present that? No, no, it's gonna get presented in July. Okay. In July. So it would go potentially on the ballot in November if uh, they vote to send it? If they vote to put it on the ballot, like there is no discussion of that right now. Going to the vote. So it will be at least next spring. It, it, it could be, again, I'm trying to, you know, it's, it depends how hard people push, where and what and when. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of budgetary wise, we're in the middle of it, and there's a lot of conversations around the reval and what that effect is. And so 
things are a little better than normal, mm -hmm. which I understand. Um, so it's not going in November is what you're saying. You don't I'm think, not, you don't predict. I wouldn't predict it right now unless something else changes. And that's where I think that, you know, we'll see. We're meeting, meaning we, town manager and finance director are meeting on Monday afternoon with the consultants to talk about financing potential and what that means. So when we meet with the ad hoc committee, the goal is not to just throw out the, the, the construction costs and say it's 40 million or whatever the number is. It's going to be, our goal is to have a greater understanding of what it is, as well as some sort of model so people can understand, okay, if it's being built in a TIF district, we potentially could save yeah. 10 million. Uh, we think we can get $5 million in naming rights. We think we might be able to get some partners and do, you know, X, Y, and Z. And I'm making these up, obviously. But what could be asked of the voters is $25 million. You know, is that make it so it's we don't get scared of the number. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then it's going to be up to come down to council for overall choice of time when to launch. You know, so we're just continuing to do everything we can on the backside. Um, so, but it's a crazy, busy time. I will back you up because when we, when I was on the ad hoc committee for the public safety building, we had a number. I think it was twenty two million, and just before we send it to the powers to be over there, they came back and they say, "No, we don't want to have anything over twenty million." So we dropped it down to nine. Now, the guy's got to go back. And work all of the numbers again. What do you get out, take out? What do you put, substitute? And so that's why uh, it takes a long time to get these proposals. Well, and I know we were four years doing it. Well, and Alex knows because he attends all the meetings, but we've been getting questions about when are we get in the build number, when are you get in the build number. And this is different than a public safety, and this is different than a school mm -hmm. because, again, there's that offset, right? If you take away a gym, the expense may go down right. by a hundred grand, but two hundred in revenue may right. go away. So right. it yeah. it yeah. doesn't yeah. translate the same like yeah. and two fire bays versus one. Right. It right. just cost a bill right. yeah. and minimal heating. And so there's a different. This is a different piece. And yeah. so we've been very trying to keep things tight mm -hmm. and strategic when we put it out there. So oh, yeah, and and your offset and revenue or your offset in um, financing. Piece of it, which you don't necessarily have in those other options. Yeah. Before. Right. Yeah. It's a big deal to know what we have. Yeah. 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 It's yeah. Big to drop that cost. Yeah. That's the we don't have an alpha. Well, no, but we might be able to. That's the thing is we are going to you identify might have a Hannaford. and then work with the committee. Yeah. And that's true. Yeah. Who, who, yeah. Who's in the community? That, that we, have Al, we have people that work for Alphon that live in the community. And so the, we don't know, we don't know, but that's why we need a complete package to say who wants to help us do this mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. And here's what we know we can do. How do we fix this other part? And then this is what left to bring the community, you know? So mm -hmm. it's, we're trying to just not make it. So it's, we want to give it a chance and fully understand, you know, and again, every year is different. And so. It's so hard because of the school being yeah. such a question mark. And obviously the school is a priority, but it feels like if they're still figuring that out and we could get this in, on the ballot in November. Right. One mm -hmm. of the discussions that we're having kind of offline in the background, and once we get this number, we'll be able to actually do it, is put something together like over 10 years. And I'll, I'll do it very simply where is that if we built a school today for 100 and a built a community center for 50, just simple math, that's $150 million, right? If we wait on the, the building and we build the school next year, you're either going to pay more or get less of a building. It's just the way it is. And then this comes back. It's never going to be cheaper to do it right now. So it's more about when does the financing make sense? Because you're, this building is only going to get more expensive. Or you're going to have to cut stuff because you want the number lower. Like, So I think we need to try to figure out on our end on the finance team mm -hmm. is where is – if you really want this, this is the time. And whatever that time is. But – this goes away, that goes away, and now you have a choice to say, okay, this bond, old bond, Haggis Parkway comes off, and so you can share, you know, it's a big lift. And it's know? tricky because it's a different audience that might be voting, 
people will feel differently about the two issues and may it may be easier to pass the community services because it works for a larger span of the population. Well, on right? paper, but we all benefit from the schools. Oh, totally. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. 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 I so agree. It's a different it's mindset. I mean, it's, you, it's a different messaging. I yes. Guess, I guess the question that I'm going to be asking is, if you want them both, what's the most financial responsible time to do? Because that's ultimately, if you if you want them both, if you if you're worried about taxes and what makes the most sense to launch it financially, if you truly want a school and a community center, which one comes with doesn't matter. But how the money works is, I think, leads a lot of people to vote. I mean, it doesn't matter when you build them. The longer you wait to do anything, it's going to get more expensive regardless. So, but if you matter. don't want a school, which is not my opinion, obviously you're going to be obstructionist about it and you're going to push it off, push it off, push it off, push it off. Mm -hmm. So it's a double edged sword. Yeah. So it's like lose, lose. So if we can get one quick and then, I don't know. Thanks for the update. <laughs> I sent you guys the open space committee. We had their, yeah. they had their first meeting. I think they're doing an open house on July 25th. I haven't, I think I saw that in my email when I was checking. Um, and it was really just a, there were a lot of, different representatives on that committee how many people um i think there were like seven or eight um and i think people my sense is there are already some of the representatives already have some pretty strong opinions was it was it created for a a certain like was there 30 that, 30 the town council okay. adopted so, 20 30 okay. percent and the meeting was well do we count the marsh it was really getting down into detail i think the intent of this meeting was to provide context. So, so essentially, after twenty thirty, it would dissolve. Not oh, the ad hoc committee is supposed to be done by December. Oh, oh, oh okay. and it's really to make a recommendation, similar thing. What what other potential areas are there in the town that we can conserve? Oh, okay. What's the difference between cons conservation and open space? Open space. Mm -hmm. So those definitions were what in the inventory is important because we have. Right. dozens and dozens of property that right. are all considered open space and so right. they're going to be able to say this meets the definition of conservation right move that into conservation which mm -hmm. a 30 by 30 number will then grow right right and then what we're working on in the background i've met with planning and where i'm going to start getting involved a little more once you get a little deeper is being able to look at a if there's potential open space use having input to say you know okay that's 30 acres, but can we put 10 into open space and 20 into conservation? Because right. that has the potential to meet a need in the master plan. Well, and that some of the debate was, okay, we own a field. The town owns a field. Well, the town could decide we can't afford to have that field anymore and sell it to someone else. So that's no longer open space. It then becomes developed. So kind of got it done for that. I believe they're having an open house on July 25th. I'll send you guys an email. I just didn't have time today. Mm -hmm. And it just popped into my box. So that's that's what that is prompting that. Yeah, a lot going on. Um, mm -hmm. and so, I think that's it. Yeah. So the next meeting we have is July 11th and we'll be visiting parking fees. Do we feel that there's anything that we need to review beforehand for parking fees? We had done that spreadsheet. Yeah, this, I feel like we yeah you have the spreadsheet. So. Yeah. For parking? Yeah. Yeah. We, we, did. we did. You know, oh. we did it. We did it both. We, we did, did both. parking. You, yeah. Is, par you oh, is parking on that? It's on the like oh. sheet. It's in a separate tab. Oh, beach sure. parking. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Parking, yeah. Oh, yeah. wait a minute. Is this more than beach parking? Well, well we remember don't... we got that request from Karen, and we decided when the the other down. Yeah, not yet. So this is just beach parking. Yeah. Well, that's the only place that you have a problem. No, oh, the remember they that, came. Uh, we, got the, we got the the action sheet from the waterfront committee about looking at fine point parking street. They were looking at things holistically. We put that for you. On we hold. put that back yes. on hold till we get more directed mm -hmm. because we wanted actionable items at that mm -hmm. time. What you guys were talking about was reviewing the parking fees at the beach. And what and when Trish and I touch base today, um I'll share my philosophy is that once we create ordinances, you know, how you want the beach environment to function, the parking fees should be created to then offset that match. Again, sometimes you can't you can only manage a facility by the fees if it's too cheap too many people come it's too expensive mm -hmm. not enough people come you know and so who do you want to go where and fees sometimes dictate that but then if there's initiatives i gave the example of the park rangers one of, one of the counselors asked me during the budget process well why don't we raise 
the fees so we can get more money for a park ranger. I'm like, I'm okay with that as long as we've reviewed it and it's validated and we agree that's what we're going to do it for. I just don't want to collect more than collect more. So and this the, spreadsheet that we created, which had all, all the other towns, that's what we need to review yes. for mm -hmm. the next meeting. Right. So we'll add it. The two agenda items would be the final review of the dog, of the of the dog, uh, the animal ordinance. Um, if there's anything that needs to be that, and then the bulk of the meeting would be to review the beach fees. Under your plan, do you feel that it's appropriate to do it in July? The parking fees, or are you are you thinking there are other aspects that well, we should be worried about? And if you're based on your example, that's the capstone. Do we have other work to do before we get to there? I think that I think looking at the parking fees would is it at least starting the discussion because all we're gonna we keep the data and so we can be looking at it. my goal would be for this board to be able to make a full recommendation mm -hmm. to council in october mm -hmm. so we yeah. have time yeah. to yeah. then if they want multiple meetings they want to have public hearings you know it can get wrapped up before the end of the year so when the new year comes mm -hmm. yeah we're we're done with this we're not dragging this out to budget Whatever season the number. i don't like having number. conversations like this during the budget yeah. season because right. you're trying to make a dime versus yeah. change something yeah. And so. you'll actually in July, you'll have had some feedback because people will have used the beach. Yes. We'll yeah. have ranger feedback. We'll have, you know, okay. we'll have, yeah. Perfect. So everybody can review that, that parking sheet, bring some suggestions. Todd, if you want to talk and bring some feedback and yep. suggestions uh, to the meeting as well, and then we can uh, review both of those items for July. And again, if you guys hear things, also share them. And that's, I mean, that's the nice thing about this. We, we run in different circles. I usually hear complaints versus thank yous. And if you hear good and bad, so, you know, bring them. We like them. Yeah. Emily, can you do one more thing? Can you just send out the link to that folder where the beach fees are? I think everyone has it, but just. It, yeah, it's in it's in that folder. Yep, CSAB. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, perfect. Okay. Well, well, we get a lot of good information yeah. from yeah. this summer anyway that we really yeah. need. Right, yeah. exactly. Yeah. That will help. Yeah. You may, in October, be. you may have a complete different right. September at the end right. of summer. Yeah. Right. Agreed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so because we should do that, because then you're saying there's others, bless you, are going to come to us, the clover. Right. They're going to Again, circle back we to us. time in your capacity. Yeah. And I think, this I think good. the fees are going to be more than one discussion. Yeah. Fine. I, I, I will tell you this also with the Plover volunteers that we have, which starts Wednesday, I think, on the 15th, they have been directed to fill a, uh, a sheet of oh, what they see and nice. so on and so forth. And you, you put that all together with the information. We have a lot of data. Then we can make some... Yeah, logical decisions that we yeah. need to make. That's yeah. perfect. Yeah, as long as we keep the mindset that we're not, we're not changing anything to change it. We're changing it to make improve. It improve. Yeah. So. Motion to adjourn. Yeah. yeah. Second. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Adios. <laughs> Have a good.